So welcome back, guys, and we're going to start this brand new week. It's been a mixed week for Spanish football and European football, but let's start off with Real Madrid, shall we? The Madrid Derby against Atafe, they won simply as a it was a quite it was a quite comfortable game, wasn't it, Oscar? Yeah, it was like Hatafi, the way they were set up, they just didn't look like they could hurt Real Madrid. And Real Madrid, you know, comfortably put two past them. Casemiro got his first goal of the season. Vasquez got a really well taken goal. And they Ancelotti, you know when he's comfortable, he makes subs. <laughs> so you got to see Gareth Bill, Ceballos, and others play for more than 10 minutes. Ten minutes. I showed you how comfortable Real Madrid were. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they were also comfortable in midweek against Chelsea. Benzema, man, hat trick. Yeah. Yeah. Two brilliant headers, and then one of my favorite things about him the ability to smell fear. <laughs> yeah. Another, yeah, but this it was a Benzema were, special that goal, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was a Benzema goal special. The making an error. <laughs> Benzema, yeah, yeah, he yeah. did it to Donnarumma, he's done it to Ulrich <laughs> and Carrios. Let's yeah. hope he doesn't do it to test again next season. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's like going into that game in the Champions League, I was mm-hmm. a bit worried for Real Madrid, but they they really played well. They played out their skin. And some of the tactical suggestions you made on this podcast last week, they followed through with, it with Valverde playing on the right. And why do you think that was so successful? Yeah, because you need the qualities that. Um, Chris Magic and Casemiro gives you, but then the energy, you know, they need to up it so Valverde comes in to provide said energy because energy is infectious, right? So yeah, you, you, you get the others pumped up and then Valverde too is covering a lot of ground, making up for any potential weakness or tiredness they have. Also, Valverde has his own qualities too on the ball. He drives forward too and like helps lead the transition moments well. And with this team, it, it seems like all the criticisms that have come from the classical, it's like it's going away step by step. Do you see them going, causing any, having any issues for the second leg, given that Chelsea just won at Southampton 6 0? Yeah. Is that a warning for Real Madrid? If they're as bad as Southampton, it's a warning, but I don't think they, they are. Uh, the only worry they'd have is that Militao is suspended for the second leg. Other than that... He's going to be a big mess, man. Yeah. Because he's he's taken his game to another level this season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you. I mean, the thing is that it's hard to see Real Madrid conceding, losing by more than two at home. Yeah. If they do, then I'm here to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I don't think it's up. Yeah, but the thing with the rule change here now is that if Chelsea wins 2-0, which is an achievable result for them, yeah, it's achievable. they could take it to extra time, maybe even penalties, and win on penalties. Yeah, but then the thing is that I feel this is where the away goal, the, the removal of the away goals would take something away because Chelsea would have to play extra time or more against a home team who it who have home advantage. I mean the Bernabeu don't the noise there, it's questionable, but under some circumstances, being the home team and getting that push from your fans could be like your own sort of advantage. Yeah, that is true. And there's an omen about Real Madrid in this competition, especially when they play the defending champions. The last, I believe the last four times they played the defending champion, they've gone on to beat them. And they've gone on to win the Champions League. So imagine. <laughs> oh dear. And and the last and two of the last times they won the Champions League, they lost four nil against Barcelona. So yeah. yeah, I hope I hope somebody stops them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... I hope they uh, I mean for the Spanish football agenda, I hope they don't mess this up when, yeah. on Wednesday, is it? But you know, I hope City or Athletic can do the business or so on the final. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And for the sake of like the fact that we are talking about the Champions League, let's talk about Atleti for a moment. They're also in the Champions League. Uh, they lost 1-0 to Manchester City. They lost 1-0 to Mallorca. We'll get to the Mallorca and what they did well, but let's talk about the Champions League result first. They got heavily criticized because 
of the way it is set up, do you think that was a fair criticism? Do you think we should be demanding more for Atleti in these games? I mean, setting up to defend against Man City is not bad. I was okay with that. I was okay with how they set up until like 30 minutes when they just put everybody back. There was nobody to lead a transition and counter-attack for them. Because Atleti are capable of like playing their way out of pressure. It's just that once they play their way out, the farthest forward person is not even at the halfway line. So that's where Simeone should have, you know, just shown more fits in his attackers and put them forward a bit. Yeah. I also feel this one is my own thing. I always have these things like playing a back three against one striker is a waste. Yeah. Playing a back three against no striker because plans to play with no striker is a bigger waste because you have less bodies up top. So, yeah. I think like the whole anti-football stuff is overblown and just normal football Twitter childish jokes. But I think they could have just positioned themselves better to counter-attack. The defending aspect is okay, in my opinion. Yeah, and do you feel the problem is with the front two? Because Antoine Griezmann, he's, yes, is their top scorer in the Champions League, but watching him over the weeks, he doesn't, he seems to be the Griezmann of Barca again even a worse version because he doesn't show yeah. the finishing ability that he showed at Barcelona. He doesn't show the, the hard pace. work. Yeah. I'll say the hard work is still there because defensively he still goes back and forth. But it's just that pace, that creativity, it seems to be lacking from this game at the moment. Yeah, against Man City, anytime he was the one leading the transition, it, it just broke apart immediately. When it was Felix, there was more... It was better. So I know I feel like I guess that shows Cholo who he needs to start in the second leg at home because you need to pressure Manstey. I think Correa and Cunha could be good. Carrasco will be available again after suspension. So they have some options to is, kind is of that, get back into his Is Carrasco returning much of a big boost for Atleti given how he's played so far this season? Or this so far in the last couple of weeks, because the Carrasco that I've seen hasn't been the best Carrasco. He's been very selfish. He's not been as creative as he should have been. Yeah, true. I mean, in the league, he has been poor recently since basically Lodi took over. Anytime Carrasco gets back into your team, he hasn't had the same effect he used to have because I thought up until February, he was arguably their best player this season. So, yeah, and... If he steps up his game, it's going to be a boost for Atleti. But that remains to be seen. Okay, true. And going towards the La Liga game against Mallorca, watching this game, it feels it felt like back to the old Atleti. Like maybe not the Atleti this season that concede lots of goals, but the Atleti that from 1920 that would just let the first half just die. And in the second half, it, it was just so flat from them. It was like they didn't want to be there. Their minds were elsewhere. I felt the rotations didn't work. Riesman and Suarez up the top together was a failure. Marcus Llorente, his form has been woeful so far. Yeah, that game, in, t- in general, that game made me want to quit. <laughs> okay, minus joke, minus joke. It wasn't really a great game for me, that team. Atleti's rotations didn't work. I saw some people complain a lot about the midfield selection because they're like, Kondogbia, okay, um, um, DePaul should work on paper, but then in real life, it doesn't seem to click. Yeah. And then Marcos Herente, I, mean, it, I think part of his success last season was because of that relationship with Trippier. This season, it hasn't been there. He's been playing right back more. I don't think I think as a right back, they do okay. So I don't really yeah. think I should judge him as a midfielder now. Because he was the least of their problems on Sunday, on Saturday, I mean. Because yeah. they lacked creativity, ideas, everything. Carrasco, like you said, was being selfish. And then Mallorca, at least don't give them any trouble until they concede the penalty. Yeah. And was that a penalty in your opinion? Because there's an argument that Renaudo does get the ball, but he does take his man at the same time. And it's kind of the, I haven't really had the chance to look at it again. But my first impression was like, if it's one of those 50-50 ones where they go too far, 
they might change it, but then I don't think it's something worthy of. It's not a clear and obvious error. error yeah, so, yeah I, I think that's the discussion we've been having with okay. penalties in the last two weeks. Yeah, and I agree. I, I feel with penalties, like the referee's discretion should always take precedent because yeah. if the referee feels it's a penalty and there is contact, then fine. But Marioka get the penalty, Maruki scores for the first time in ages. Like I remember when the first game to Spanish football, it seems like he's scoring every week. Yeah, he, he, he started off really well. And then Marioka's horrible seven game loss streak, you know, happened. And then he's the man that ended it from the spot. Now Marioka are player of the relegation zone, you know, in a weekend of bad results for most teams down there, I think they got the best results. Yeah. And do you think with this result, the confidence they have from beating Atleti, like they beat beaten Atleti twice over the season, but can this be a game changer going forward? They still have some tough games, but I think they only have to really worry about Cadiz because the gap between them and Levante and Alaves is too much to throw away in, in the space of five, six games. But they have gone on a serious loss streak already, so maybe it can happen again. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, maybe it can, but I don't know. I just, I, I saw because they have to, yeah, they have to play Alaves pretty soon. soon yeah. I think that game is going to be the sentence of Alaves unless a miracle happens. Yeah. And they also have to play Granada. Oh, these yeah, guys have mean. tasty fixes. <laughs> They have so many like interesting games. They have to go to Barcelona away. They have to go to Sevilla away. So it's it's gonna be a tough tough one for them. Yeah. yeah. They have Elche next week, but Elche are pretty much okay, I think. Yeah. But let's see, we'll keep an eye out on them. And to the last Champions League team, Villarreal, they played against Athletic and they rested a lot of players for this game, like practically the entire eleven. And yeah, this me, yeah, this pops me to think like. Have they been underperforming in the league so far? Because you look at that 11 versus Athletic, and I can't think of many players from Athletic that make it into that 11 that they played over the weekend. Yeah. And the numbers, I saw this like number about the expected points. Villarreal, unexpected points, like when you subtract the whatever, I'm sure you guys know, okay. are like fourth or fifth. So you ask yourself what's wrong. Well, they've missed Jared for huge chunks of the season and they've made some pretty stupid mistakes at the back. Yeah, terrible. Uh, like the one against yeah. Atletico. <laughs> there were like two against Atletico. Right? Parejo allows Korea to score from the halfway <laughs> line or something. Yeah. Like it's been it's been pretty messy at the back sometimes for Villarreal. You know, in, including games where they should win, but you know, when it comes to the big games, they just Forget all of those defensive errors. Yeah, and, and that's and that's yeah, it's surprising, right? Because mm-hmm. you look at how they played in the first half of the season. Even I'll say even in the big games in La Liga, they don't look as convincing. Like they do compete more, but they don't you don't get the sensation that they're gonna win the game. Yeah. And then Bayern Munich comes out, I'm thinking they're gonna get smashed four one or three one. And they put up the best performance I've ever seen from this very outside since I, I can't remember last time I saw them being this good against the team, to be honest. And they, they were amazing against Bayern Munich. They should have won by three or four. Yeah. I mean, could those chances come back to haunt them? They probably will, but I think of Villarreal is more about the journey at this point because no one expected them to stand up to Bayern. They kept alone, absolutely wiped the floor with them. If not for large di- last ditch tackles and some bad luck, Villarreal should have really had more comf- comfort in this tie. Yeah, but credit to Emery, credit to all the players, especially to Parejo, oh Celso. God, Parejo, man. Yeah. That he, guy, he was he was awesome in that game. He was slept on midfielder in world football. Yeah, normally when people say that, I'm just like, is it really? Like I do rate him, but I'm like, is it really? But then when he gives a performance like that, and you just think. Imagine if this guy was at Atletico or was at Barca and doing this every week. People would call him amazing. And yeah, yeah. it's crazy. And so Valverde yeah. wanted to sign him when it was at the Barcelona manager. And you can see why. Because yeah, he's, he's just classy, man. 
Yeah, it was his class. And, and Foyt was also very good, I think. Yeah, Foyt was good. And that right that right side, at, or I, feel, I believe Lo Celso played on the right side. Yeah, right Lo Celso and Foyt really worked hard yeah. back and forth together. And I was surprised that worked because I, I don't really think of Lo Celso as a right winger. Mm-hmm. But he did really well. He was very strong. And you think of Bayern and they are this physical team. And sometimes like they won the physical battles against Davis. And I believe Gnabry was there in the first half. And then they had to play against Sané. And sometimes you just see Sané and Davis like bouncing off fourth and um, yeah. you look Chelsea and you're just like, wow, this was it was a very good performance. Yeah. Uh, I think in the second leg, I'd be very shocked if Bayern has uninterested as they looked on um, this thing, because they have home advantage as well. And the thing with Bayern is that if you make mistakes against them early once, they get one. They don't stop at one. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, if, but if I, if Villarreal, I, I guess I can trust Villarreal to like see a game like this out, as difficult as it may sound. Yeah. They're one of the best equipped teams around to do um, such a feat. Yeah, but they have to be critical in this game, in the second leg. And yeah, I'll say the, sure. one thing is they have to, even if they concede the first goal, they really have to keep their heads in the game. They really exactly. have to. Because one nil yeah. can go to penalties. I yeah. know it's a long time, but can go to penalties and then they can win from there. So, yeah, it's all about reacting to negative situations well yeah. if you do good behind. Yeah, because the worst thing against Bayern is like if, you, if they score and they smell blood, yeah. they, they keep going, man. Like, really to be over in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, we keep going, but that that's it for the Champions League teams. Uh, the 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 bad news for Villarreal is that it seems like getting the Europa League is a foregone conclusion because they're I believe they're eight points behind Real Sociedad. They're even mm-hmm. ten points behind Betis, so it's it's going to be hard for them to get the top six. Yeah. And then sevens might not even get them European football if the arrivals for Valencia win the cup. Cup, yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know. It's going to be feel like a mixed season in some ways. Like, <laughs> it, it, it may feel bittersweet, but it will be more sweet yeah. whether they beat Bayern or not. Yeah. And I think the last time they had a Champions League run like, where they went to the semifinals, they didn't even finish in the top six. I could be wrong, but they didn't finish in the top six the following season. But yeah. And um, moving on to Barcelona. Wow, what a game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a game. Levante, whenever, like, Levante, they're crazy because they'll be so bad against Cadiz, against Elche, but when Barca, Madrid, or Atletico come, like, they, they do reach the game. Yeah. I mean, I had, now and then I'm a pessimistic guy, but I was like, man, I'm like, either Frankfurt or Levante are going to stray us away from home. Like Frankfurt, we kind of got to it with the sloppy first half, but then the first half today was disgusting. <laughs> Levante, like we set the tone and the tempo for them to just raid us. Yeah. And, you know, Morales had that very good run where he looked like Leo Messi again for the oh, second man. week running. Yeah. And it was just miracles that we were able to keep him out. Yeah. Until, you know, our clown defense <laughs> surfaces his ugly head yet again. Yeah, it's funny because Barca had never conceded a penalty this season. But exactly, I, I saw you talk about this last week when we were, everyone was having this debate about oh, the referees favor Real Madrid and all that. But then you know we go and concede three in one game. <laughs> one game, and, and let's go through all the three. The first one, what do you think? It was? All of them are penalties. There's all no need penalties to exactly. of them. There's no need to go <laughs> but then to stay again, and you've criticized him a lot, but he came up clutch in that second penalty, didn't he? Thank goodness. I mean, it wasn't a great penalty. Yeah. I don't get why they changed penalty kick takers, honestly. I think it's to like, so it doesn't, it psychs out the goalkeeper and it yeah. doesn't psych out the player. Because if you're the player, you're thinking, yeah. okay, this guy, you can overthink it, right? But if it's yeah. a new penalty taker, it's a new player. So the goalkeeper is like, oh, where is he going to go? I can't really like psych where he's going to go to. Yeah, another thing is that I thought Morales was going to miss because Morales' penalty record has been bad. At least Mar- Mar- Roger Martin's penalty record is a bit better, but Morales' one has been bad. So <laughs> it was kind of like the other way around. Yeah. And then Melero comes on and he places it in the place test and dives twice. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that psyching out team worked. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, but fair play to Barca. Like, they they really they came out of the adversity. They scored Dembele again with another assist. Aubameyang scoring again. And, my God, Gabi and Pedri, man. Wow. Like, so then wow. really changed the game. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like after that. After like they could have, they should have come on when it was two nil, but thankfully it was one nil, and then we are like, okay, let's wake up. Yeah, and how lucky is Barca to have those players, especially now where they can't really sign the best midfielders in the world? Because if they were to sign these players in the market, that would be like hundred and twenty uh, million euros combined. Crazy. Especially if they were in certain countries where the price tags are very inflated. <laughs> but that's that's something for another day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like on on Barca though, having Pedri and Gabi be so important for them, it's a blessing. Really, it, it really is. It really is because it could without them, I would say Barca would be possibly where maybe closer to where Real Sociedad is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, but especially without Pedri because our record with and without him is staggering. That's why I was shocked when he didn't start today because he hasn't lost a league game this season. Mm-hmm. Our win rate with him is 80%. That's crazy. I know in the normal season, when he was more fit, if he's more fit, that would go down a bit. But it's crazy how much better he makes us. Yeah, it's, it's like ever since he walked into the team, it's like even when Messi was there, it's like Messi was like, yeah. this Messi is guy immediately respected say. him. He's like, yeah, yeah this, this is a guy I can really link up with. Yeah. And to talk about our homeboy, Ronald Coleman, like I feel... I just feel he's been hard done by it. Yeah, a little bit. Because, <laughs> like, he missed Pedri a lot during those periods. Yeah, where... I, I think having having Pedri injured was a big killing blow to him. Yeah. Especially when he also had Alba injured at the same time. Fatty injured. And, and Kuman didn't have a lot of luck. But then, yeah. honestly, with the Kuman thing, I blame Laporta more than I blame Kuman. Because if he didn't want him, just let him go and forget and not waste everybody's time in him. Sure. True, but it, that was a bit it's unsafe because Kuma is a club legend. You have to treat him with respect. Yeah, but I know he's not the club legend like Javi that was homegrown, but still, the man won us a Champions League, the very first Champions League. But he, first. And, he, and he also brought Barcelona with the young. That's that's like exactly the, this, this, the same year. <laughs> and I, again, I'm apologizing to him because when he, when I saw him coming, I'm like, no, Allah, what's going? <laughs> Uh, was going at least one if if he gets his head on it. And, and it's like the same similar goal with Espanyol, man. The same movement. <laughs> the same movement. And it, it's he's like he's changed the dynamic because and you have to give respect to Xavi because yeah, he's he brought Dembele back. It, yeah. Any any other manager would have been like, okay, you don't want to sign a new contract. Laporta is like ready to have Dembele sit on the stand. Yeah. And he had faith in Luke Young, even though he wasn't seen as his player. And that's something that he's done really well this season. Yeah, Javi has really gotten the best out of players that were on the fringes are somewhat limited. Because even like when you look the young start, you can see like he, he, the team plays well with him. Yeah. Because he does it like he makes use of Luke De Jong's like strong hold up player no. Yeah. Which honestly, I think we could use sometimes because Aubameyang's hold up play is a bit off. Yeah, and it's it's like now Barca's playing towards the strengths, and mm-hmm. it's crazy to see a Barca team put so many crosses in. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> especially a shabby Barca team. But yeah, it's a crazy game for them for Levante. I think this. Is I feel bad for the like it's it's one of you know that. Be, a picture where someone is holding the gun and yeah. they're, they're crying. <laughs> right, yeah. That's how I felt. I, yeah, like, I really missed them. Yeah, if they if they won, they would have been four points behind my academy. Like, yeah, that's definitely doable. But yeah. unfortunately, we also need the points too because the yeah. top four race isn't exactly closed out yet. No. But even yeah. if they tied, they would have been like, they would have had to play Granada the week after and if they're beating Granada, they could have been like three points with the game in hand. Yeah, true. And so, but yeah, I'm, I'm really going to miss them. Let's yeah, they add so much to the league, like yeah. all these shocks. Like I, like I made this joke, right? Beating Levante twice in seasons for everyone. I made it as a joke because it's actually true. Yeah. No one really does the double over these guys. No. 
if you get them once, they'll get you another time. <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'm going to miss them, man. But I don't think we'll miss a lot of their players because they have too many good players to be in the second division. Yes, that is true. And the next opponents, Granado, is also part of an unbelievable cracker, man. Yeah. The last 10 minutes of this game was out of this world. It was wild. Yeah, the whole, the whole Granada, game was great. Oh, yeah, it, it really was. And Lopetegui changed the system to start with the game. He went for 4 2 3 1. They were more, I guess, the, that made Sevilla sort of more attacking, but also they were more exposed, especially in the first goal. Like, I've never seen Sevilla with so many spaces, like in the midfield that they had when Maxi scored that goal. Exactly. And that thing is that the two he put back, Rakitic and Jordan, are actually defensive midfielders. So that makes them even more exposed. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Like what, not only when they lose the ball or something, there's Fernando there to cover, but he wasn't there this time. And Maxi scored a wonderful goal. No, but, but they did come back from that. Yeah. With, a, a very good work goal by Diego Carlos and Ocampos. He thought his goal was offside, <laughs> but it turns out it wasn't. And it, it looked Ocampos like... really needed that goal, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I he... think he scored this this year until that. Yeah, he hasn't scored this year until that goal. Yeah. And which is surprising because yeah. he was so good in the back end of last of last year. He scored yeah, two know, right? goal, crucial goals. Yeah, it's just this year. Sevilla's attackers are taking a long holiday for the most part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think... saw this stat, right? Yeah. Sorry, I saw this stat. Papu came back and while he wasn't part of most of it, they scored four goals. Yeah. Since he got injured in February, he scored four goals while he was out. Oh, wow, that's insane. Like, that, that guy really adds a lot of quality to the attack. I think yeah. just his presence, just the short Argentinian presence makes them exactly that 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 stand puts, tall. that that unnerves people. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, am I playing against Maradona Messi or who am I, who the hell am I playing against? Sure. I just know that they're going to be very good. Yeah, and I felt sorry for Paul Rafamer. He scored the goal to make it 3 one, <laughs> but it got uh, uh, disallowed. Yeah. I'm not sure. And he got booked for no good reason. For, yeah, I, I don't think that's is worthy of being disallowed. I think that's just a normal yeah. come together. It shouldn't have been disallowed, but even if you're disallowing it to book him, is just man. But he got his goal in the end. Yeah, he got his goal in the end, but it was after Granada, like equalized, equalized. against <laughs> and and, Peter Diaz with the header. header. And like the camera Monchi. Yeah. And I'm just thinking then, is this <laughs> is Lopetegui going to be under some serious trouble? But you're going to see something about Granada. Yeah. Granada, I'll say something about Lopetegui too. Granada, you know, they really put a lot of effort into this game. They fought, they made a very competitive derby. Just yeah. in the end, Sevilla, you know, won. And I think, because from what the pre site commentator was saying, Sevilla should be happy won because Lopetegui was really furious on the touchline with some of the mistakes they were making. Yeah. Like, they were predicting a very, very Hot dressing room if they dropped points, but thankfully uh, for yeah. if severe players, they didn't get the head drive treatment at the end. Because uh, if they dropped points, they would have been in some serious trouble because yeah. the next game is Real Madrid. Betis mm-hmm. look on fire, and Sevilla would have been like in, under some serious pressure, especially given how hot the top four race is in Spain right now. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you have real sources that we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah. They aren't as spectacular as Betis, but they're creeping up on them. Yeah, they are. They are. But let's, let's talk about Betis. And mm-hmm. another Andalusian derby delivered. And Cadet, they took the lead. Alejo was scoring. And you felt, okay, maybe Betis is going to fall aside. But no. Teo comes on. He scores a goal. And Panda, helping my fancy team, scored again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but real betters, they they always find a way like these days as well. Because yeah. there are games like this where they would have drawn at best last season, but they just find that extra gear, that extra bit of quality. Because Tell's game, Tell's goal came from nowhere, really. Like you just no. flipped it back to him, and then the placement was absolutely superb. Yeah, especially to be Ledesma, who's not who's not slouch. Yeah, Ledesma is a very good one, and you could tell. He was so frustrated he couldn't get more onto that penalty from Borja later on. Yeah. And for this better side, like 
they they're on the cusp of of greatness because this could be their joint best season ever in the twenty first century if they mm-hmm. do finish if they finish in top four somehow and they win the cup. And yeah. with Betis, the problem is they've always had this. They could have good seasons like this one, but they've never been able to follow this up. And I think with Pellegrini, this is the first time, certainly since I've been watching Spanish football, where Betis would actually improve on finishing. Season improve on a season where they've done so well like from going from like six to fifth or points wise and it's crazy because they've been in Europe they've been in three competitions and they're still giving these performances like what do you think is the key to them being so good this season that they're we know they're going to be in the Europa League barring a disaster or Valencia winning the cup yeah I think it's just okay at first of all, I think it's his lucky jacket. Because <laughs> he, he tends to win a lot more with that than without it. But the other thing is that the guy, he's such a good manager. Yeah. And he's brought out the best in... He brought out the best in Borja again. Because Borja, the season before he came, was absolutely terrible. But then he yeah. brought back... He revived the panda from extinction. <laughs> yeah. He gets like he also brought back the best in one because one is has always been a talented player, but he has always had injuries or inconsistency. And one goals have been important too. Yeah, but sadly for one in this game, he, he assisted. He the assisted team. the Cadiz goal. From <laughs> yeah, it's funny because he has a he scored last season against them and this season too so uh, yeah that's a he weird made, record against them he already has 14 goals man I'm, I'm surprised i'm not sure whether it tells us about the quality of the league or, <laughs> or about <Wami. laughs> exactly i i don't know about that one like because yeah. one last season used to be like <laughs> my go-to player to banter when i'm like what's wrong with some attackers in this league yeah but fair play to him he's had an amazing season and yeah maybe we can get the national team called up, who knows? <laughs> who knows, who knows, yeah. But and a striker who you can banter this season is Alexander Isak. We haven't spoken about the office to that, and I guess since last week, but they've gotten back-to-back wins. But um, honestly, Isak was terrible in this game. <laughs> he was. Yeah, like, honestly, I was watching this game with my brother, and I was trying to defend Isak. I'm like, he hasn't been that bad. I mean, I'm like, numbers-wise, yes, but I'm like, performance is no. But then after that, Comical penalty attempt. I'm like, uh, what's what's wrong with you? You like many chances. Sorry. Yeah, he had many chances. chances in this game. Like clear cut chances. Chances where the xG is like very close to one, mm-hmm. and he just couldn't put them away. On top of that, like he had so many transition moments where he was just making stupid mistakes on the. I mean, I feel like I'm being too harsh with him, but like you know, it just hasn't been his day. After that penalty miss, I don't think Emmanuel is going to let him take the other <laughs> one. And thankfully yeah. for him, you know, his co-striker, Sorlot, stepped up. And yeah. then Lenormand, you know, scored the winner. David Silva had a great game, I thought. Yeah, who would have thought Sorlot would be the better Scandinavian striker? Not me. I know, right? I, I thought, like, Isak was going to beat him out for the, like, um, competition. But I think... Charlotte might have more league goals than him. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And and on there was a time where I called Charlotte the worst striker in La Liga. No, really, I, I don't think he was ever that bad because anytime I watch him, he's he's done all right. I guess it was a bit like Luke de Young where Ross is that he's he's he's, mo- he's mobile. Yeah, Ross that they don't take advantage of his movement or yeah, his strengths. True. For when you have a striker that tall, you're meant to like put crosses in and let him eat it, but they don't really do that much. Well, one of their crosses are kind of like cut backs and like trying to score the perfect five-a-side goal. Yeah. yeah. They haven't really adapted to him enough. If they did, maybe they could be top four by now. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah. they're still very close to that top four spot. They're three yeah. points behind Atleti. And like, to talk about Atleti again, it's like, have you seen their last five games? I uh, I, saw, I I took note of this from the start of the season actually because I'm like okay worst comes to worst I was thinking a title race yeah. not the top <laughs> race to no, silly yeah. me I was like worst comes to worst I know Atleti aren't winning all of their last four games barring some sort of extreme upturn in form form yeah because they, they have they have Espanol, Sedad, Granada, Sevilla, at all. 
too. Like starting with Espanol and Granada. Oh, uh, sorry for, for like their last games: Espanol, Granada at home, Athletic away, the Madrid derby, Elche away. The last two games are Sevilla at home and Ross is that away. Yeah. And that Ross is that Atleti game could be a massive game for top four. Yeah. Ross is that have their own tough games. So they have Betis. Yeah. Next week, next Friday, they have us. They have, I think they are here to play Villarreal for the second no. time. And, and, so, and they also have Atleti too, which theoretically is a tough game for them. But on that last day, it could be Atleti, Real Sociedad, Real Madrid, Betis. <laughs> and I can imagine a scenario where Real Madrid, they know they've won the league. They just yeah. play out. They just play the kids. So Betis can have a chance. Or, of- or Real Madrid haven't won the league yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to win not, it. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah. They're going to win it. But how worried should Atleti be about Real Sociedad and Betis? And how would you rate Betis and Real Sociedad's chances of finishing in top four? I still see Atleti doing it, but Real Betis definitely have a, much, a pretty high chance. I think we also said that some of their games are just more, their games are more difficult than Betis and mm. Atleti and Sevilla. To so Sevilla is still in this conversation, okay. even though the, the gap is still healthy. Because if they lose to Real Madrid next week, everyone else gets a positive result. You know, yeah. like, talking about them again. Yeah, that that is true. That's true. And I guess the last two games we have is Osuna versus Alaves. Poor old Alaves. They thought they were going to get a point, but again, late goals are our theme in La Liga. Anti yeah. Budimir squad. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, Osasuna had a penalty. They should they missed. They had an, a goal ruled that for offside. It was Budimir, and then Budimir throws the dagger right into Alaves hearts later on. Yeah, the new boss, um, Julio Velasquez, has a pretty much impossible job at this point. It, it will be the greatest of great escapes if they survive. Because at least with Levante, you can see how they can survive because they have yeah. so much attacking quality. But with Alaves, it's like, how? You know, it's going to be like a big miracle if they stay here. Yeah, it will be. And I, I feel this has been coming up for a long time. They've just been losing 40 year on year. It kind of reminds me about Sunderland for so many seasons in England, where they always fought back and fought back until they couldn't fight back no more. Okay, more. Yeah. That, that's, that would be a shame for them. For Espanyol, they also had a late goal by Wule. Our boy, so you dad, I got the assist. <laughs> it's a sister season, but did you see, like, he had a very nice run first up where, like, he squared, like, he dribbled past a lot of players into the box. He squared it, but no one was there to um, yeah, could, I, um, get on the end of it. So that's probably an assist for him. Yeah. yeah I, I, that's I class. He, he's so class. He's the only Espanol player I like, him and, and Boadu, everyone else. Uh, uh, you don't like RDT? I don't, I don't dislike him. I just don't <laughs> mind him. <laughs> Nah, he's like little Cristiano. <laughs> exactly. He's like, he's like a Ronaldo in how he plays. He's like so confident his ability. Sometimes yeah. too co- overconfident, but you know, sometimes he's a bit like Benzema, honestly, because his little <laughs> play is quite good. Yeah. And you yeah. Tell, I, I feel him and Dada are too good for Espanol, but <laughs> we'll see what happens in the summer if they like bolster the team to get a bit closer to the top seven because yeah, that's where that's, it yeah. be. Yeah, as that, I think that should be the goal for Celta and Espanyol because you get to this point every season and we barely talk about Celta that much because they're not challenging for Europe neither are they are going to be relegated to. Yeah, but I, I think Celta will take that because they went through a couple of seasons where it, it seems like they were about to get relegated. I remember in the 18-19 race where Seems like half of La Liga <laughs> could have could have been relegated. And yeah, the Real really and Athletic emotional. Club are in danger too. Yeah, and 1920 season where I think Celta should have been relegated. Yeah, they should have. Laganes was so unlucky. That yeah, on the pitch and off the pitch. Too. Yeah, man, I, I nearly cried when they when they when Oscar had that last chance, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is gonna be the goal to save them. But yeah, yeah. by the bye, <laughs> by the bye. I mean, Javier Aguirre. 
couldn't keep them up. Maybe he can keep Mallorca up. Maybe. Maybe yeah. we'll wait and see. And moving to England and what was billed as the greatest game ever since the history football was invented. How yeah. did you see this one? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, last week I backed City to get the result and they almost did. Uh, they made it 3 2, but Sterling's goal was cancelled and uh, there was controversy about should Fabinho have gotten sent off or should. Thiago have got in his second yellow, but overall it was a pretty, you know, entertaining game between two very good teams. Yeah. And, and there's still a point up between them for the title race. Yeah, but it seems like City have like a they have less of a margin because if they do lose or they tie and Liverpool win, like Liverpool have that heads that goal difference advantage. Difference. Yeah. yeah. Forget it. We're not in Spain anymore with heads head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So uh, and also beating Liverpool would have given them a lot of breathing space. So now that they haven't done them, I don't think Liverpool have too many opponents left that are going to trouble them so much. Mm-hmm. The best team they have to play against are Tottenham and Man United. I don't need to say much. <laughs> should, we, <laughs> should we speak about the, the incident that everyone's talking about? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. No, but let's pick out the game first. Okay. Our Everton, who have been terrible for weeks, and uh, and like fans are like, wow, we can really get relegated. Suddenly, look good again because they face my United. Lampard effect, man. Lampard. Lampard, you know, schools Ragnik or does <laughs> Rag school himself? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I don't know at this point. Like he's just I know, my, guy yeah, in his my, reputation. Yeah. yeah. I feel like my net has made the stupid mistake number 1,000 by sacking him from being a, board, a director at all, <laughs> which they shouldn't do. The guy is the best equipped person to tell you what's wrong with this team. Yeah. Whether they'll have the pool of like European football to fix this team is another issue. But sure. yeah, about the incident. Yeah, about the incident. Uh, Ronaldo, <laughs> how much uh-huh. trouble should he be in? I mean... I'm not too familiar with the laws in the UK, but I'm hearing that Merseyside police are investigating it. So it could be, he could just end up paying a fine or something. Yeah, because that was pretty stupid from him. Because yeah, that, that was pretty. His phone out there is not even doing anything. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't do that, especially someone of your nature who is a role model to so many. True. Like, how can your fans defend that? They yeah. surprisingly were able to defend it. <laughs> And do you know the worst part? He invited him to watch more my United games. More my United games. That, that's, <laughs> like, more, that's even more torture, man. I guess get him a new phone. Yeah, yeah. Just, get, just get him a new phone and let him watch the Champions League final. Yeah, by the Champions Norwich, League. right? <laughs> Norwich. <laughs> Norwich have a distinct. Norwich have my United next. And Norwich are in trouble, but my United could revive them too. <laughs> Yeah, Honestly, at this, at, yeah, at this point, it's just, it's kind of, I saw this meme where they're like, you have to be a sick man to enjoy this man. Yeah, well, man. I guess I'm very sick. <laughs> I'm very sick. I have so many pictures, just like stock pictures of that. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But they might have Eric Tenag for next season. Do you feel <laughs> Tenag's ready? Like, obviously, it's the level of this team, like, anyone is level of next season, I said at the moment. But do you feel he, he can be that missing factor? They've tried Mourinho, they tried Louis Van Gaal, they tried David Moyes. Yeah. My thing is that they need to give him time and the resources to work because this job is not an easy fix. Like, half of the starting players should not be bench players at that team. So, I feel like the team my United need is vision, like direction. Where do we want to be as a football club? Do we want to be a regular top four team that just makes money off shared sales or do we want to be a serious team? Yeah. So unless the vision of the club changes, it doesn't matter if they tag team, Pep, club, and whoever. They're not going to do anything. That is true. And moving on to Italy, where we saw many twists and turns in this ever enthralling title race. Napoli being the serial bottlers that they are, they bottled it again. 
against the same team they bottled it against when they had that tight race with Juventus, Fiorentina. Exactly. Every, everyone has been talking about if Fiorentina again <laughs> casually destroying Napoli in April. Oh, my God. It's so painful to see this team. And Milan, they're not serious either. Against Torino. No, they drew. Yeah, they drew. They're not serious either. Since, they, serious since they brought out that abomination of the, of the special kids. <laughs> and that's what you get. <laughs> Honestly, I, have, I, I want Milan to win the league, but I have no sympathy. So I guess since Inter, you know, have gotten them yard together in the last two games, you know, beating yeah. UV and beating Hayas, Verona, they now have the league in their hands. They also have a game in hand too. Sure, and Verona is like Levante, so that's not exactly. a huge win. That's a huge win. That's a very UV huge win. too. UV might not be out of this. Yeah. These two results. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm telling you, if UV had done their job in Turin, my prediction for UV winning Scudetto would have come true, man. Yeah. That's all they have to do. The thing is that UV have won against everyone else except these three teams. That's where their undoing has been ultimately. True. Because and... they drew twice against, yeah, they drew twice against Milan, they lost to Inter twice, I think. Yeah. Also Napoli twice. Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel what signings would you make at Juventus for them to take that next level where they're UV of old and they're winning the Scudetto with their eyes closed? New midfielders. Plus, I don't want to believe this guy. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but new midfielders. New midfielders. New midfielders the defenders too. Like, we're, you about to, we're about to believe poor Alvaro. No, no, Alvaro. No, I like Alvaro. Yeah. He's French. Oh, oh, Rabio. Okay. Yeah, the most divisive player <laughs> among Juventus. Yeah, at least is he exactly. good or is he thing. bad? <laughs> Why does he get picked? Why is he an untouchable? <laughs> you know, I, don't know. I mean, Rabio hasn't really lived up to the potential he showed when he was coming through the ranks at PSG. Yeah. yeah, I remember we wanted to sign him for eighty million plus racket. Which I'm glad we didn't make that financial <laughs> mistake. <laughs> Um, and the, the Bartomeu days were, were yeah, something yeah. else. <laughs> but for Juve, their main challenger is Jose Mourinho's Roma, who won against Salentina. And if, do you know Frank Ribery plays for Salentina? Yeah, I know, I know. He left Fiorentina last season. Last season. Joined. Given assist in this one, Roma had to come back from behind to win. And it seems like things are going well for Mourinho at Roma. Except for the fact they lost to Bodo Glimt Bodo, again. again. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the first two group first stage one. games yeah. uh, the first two group stage games you could understand it a bit because because of the league commitments you rest you rotate a lot yeah but this time they play, they went at them with everything and still lost and, <laughs> yeah the story of Buddha Glimt is one that's really like, inspiring because they've they've really done well in Europe and if they can beat Roma that's another fairy tale yeah and I, I like the way, honestly, the conference league gets a lot of like flack, but I sort of like the fact that you can get stories like Bodo or yes. teams. It's, it's a good competition. In some way. Yeah. And it's also improved the Europa League, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because they made the Europa League more concise. Streamlined. It's, yeah, it's a much better competition. Yeah. Because for the most part, the Europa League group stages, everyone has been like, yeah, whatever. Like when yeah. we'll see what happens when the Champions League teams drop in, but yeah, now yeah. it's like much now, better. So, and now I think it because it's eight groups, it's a lot easier to follow than yeah, so that's ball. easier to follow. And yeah, check it out. Yeah, Atalanta are one of the favorites in the Europa League, but in Serie A, my god, they, they've fallen off then. Yeah, so they'll beat them. I don't really know how to explain that. I mean, they made some changes for this one, so I understand why they could have lost, but then this has been a repeating team we've talked about every week. Yeah. And Leipzig aren't really easy to play against. No, they aren't easy, but they got a good result against Leipzig and Germany, didn't they? Yeah, so getting that, and German atmosphere, as we know, they're really like intense. So going getting that home advantage back in Bergamo, would be useful for them to qualify for the last round for the semi final. Yeah, but Leipzig they look good. They beat Hoffenheim 3 0. Christoph Nkunku again, given, given some assists, scoring goals. 
Right. He's not going to stay in Leipzig next season, is he? Yeah, I've seen Liverpool linked to him, but Liverpool are best stuck in forwards. I don't know where he's going to fit in. Yeah. I don't know. If, if someone comes for him, he'll definitely leave Leipzig aren't afraid to cash in. Uh, do you think he's someone who can do it at Barcelona if Dembele lives? He's not He's not a right winger, so I don't know if he can replace Dembele, but he could be successful for Barcelona. Why not? Mm. I know. The other Barcelona target, Erling Haaland, he's he's on a gold drought. Yeah, yeah he, he's <laughs> between the injuries and the whole, will I, where, will I, where am I going to go? And I, I feel that all, the, all these teams have contributed to his lack of form. But maybe, maybe, I mean, they have Wolfsburg and Bayern the next two games. Those are big games for him to show his quality again and just be like you know I'm with you guys until summer at least let's just focus on securing top four All right, I can't wait for that Bayern trash and then the alliance it's going to be sweet <laughs> it's going to be a spectacle <laughs> especially if, imagine if Bayern gets knocked out by Villarreal uh, <laughs> and they're going to take they all really the take it. for the season <laughs> so it's like 7-0 8-0 now they only beat Augsburg 1-0 but Maybe they yeah, they need the late penalty to do that. I kind yeah. of struggled with them. But I don't read too much on this because, like, even the, the Champions League teams in Spain, they really struggled this weekend. Yeah. Apart from Real Madrid, but they played... Real Madrid got comfortable, but everyone else kind of yeah. struggled. But one team that didn't struggle in Europe this weekend was Pace. Hey, <laughs> your your boy's hat trick of assist from Messi. He's weird, he's weird man. I don't know. <laughs> Patrick, I, I mean, I mean, fair play to you. Honestly, giving an assist feels better than scoring your goals. <laughs> but it's weird that Neymar has 10 league goals now. And Neymar for the last two seasons hasn't really reached that amount of numbers. And Mbappe, what can he say? He's incredible. Person, man. And a phenomenon. Have you Mbappe seen the, I've seen the rumors of his contract. Yeah. PSG, they're offering him 150 million pounds. Personally, my team is like it's a. I feel it's like PR. Honestly, I feel it's PR to make him, to make him either look good, like from his point of view, look good to the fans or look like a villain to the fans, mm. and have the ultras be on his back. That way, and, yeah. uh, I, I feel like, like no French football is like willing to stay, or the entire France of the entire country of France is exactly. willing to stay. Macron has come out to say something about it. Gautier came out a week ago and playing in this team, like if they keep on putting up the numbers that they're doing, like why not stay? Yeah, if, yeah that does, if you look at it right, if, if it, it seems somewhat that the, the three of them are finally clicking in some ways, so maybe you can try and enjoy that for one more season because Real Madrid always wants it. They're not going to go away. Yeah. But if he rejects it though and comes to Real Madrid, like think of how much the Real Madrid fans would love him. Yeah, they they love him because he's always wanted to come there. And yeah, I don't know. You know what? Let him come. Bring anyone they want. <laughs> winning the league. We're winning the treble next season. <laughs> oh man, Barca fans are already getting too too confident. Nah, I, I'm I'm joking by the way. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. But but honestly, I I love to have great players in my league. So know, yeah, let him come. Yeah, I think the, the, the better players, the, the better for, for La Liga. It'll be a loss for French football. And in some ways, I'm sort of torn about it because I can see like how much of a symbol he is for French football and having the best French player, yeah, the second best French player in the world, if we're counting Benzema in your league, is going to be like awesome. But it'll be great for Spanish football to have another generational talent come yeah. and... It'll, it'll be nice to see Mbappe in La Liga, I'm not going to lie. But before we finish, we're just going to have a bit of a discussion on the Champions League, right? The change in the format. You hate the format. Obviously. That's, yeah. it's, it's almost, it makes the Super League suggestion look good. Uh, come on. Why? Okay. Okay. The, 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 okay, yes. Both of them are bad. What am I saying? But it's just that the fact that you decide to give two spots to two teams that don't deserve it at all makes no sense. The, the Super League team is like, in their eyes, it's a breakaway. 
Like, yeah. we'll still, they still think their players are capable of playing both Champions League and Super League. <laughs> is why that's stupid. Yeah. But at least it's not like you, it's not corrupting the core of the competition itself by saying yeah. we are going to reward mediocrity. And- <laughs> sure. But to play devil's advocate, yeah, right? I think UEFA is yeah. just saying that, that is- basically a lot of teams put a lot of, they invest a lot of money to make the Champions League bigger, mm-hmm. to win the Champions League. And to reward them, like to reward, like let's say, let's put for example a team like Atletico, right? They might not make it into the Champions League this season, and they've been a team that's like grown towards the Champions League. And UEFA is thinking, okay, we want to encourage more of that, more of teams investing money to make this competition bigger. So if they fall out one season, maybe we cover them for that season. Do you still agree with yeah, that? But on, thinking? Yeah, yeah, but on the flip side, yeah. Do other, a lot of teams don't have this money to invest towards the Champions League because of like for whatever reason, whether it's stingy owners or just not adept or whatever. So yeah, again, you're, you're only like a handful of clubs that can cut on my hand that's capable of doing this if they don't have UCL football regularly. Yeah, that's true. And I'll say the and other... we've not even talked about yeah, we've not even talked about the addition of more games, which is. <laughs> No, if, if we Honestly, talk about that, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I, 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 the rich football is going. I might just drop this sport at some point. Yeah. When I when I feel I don't, don't have any emotional yeah. connection to it, I, I don't want that day to come because I obviously love football. But some people are making it really difficult. <laughs> My prediction is that this format will be a big failure for UEFA and it'll go yeah. back to the old one. Yeah. And it's like, I can get what UEFA is trying to do. I would say maybe don't give it by third places. Like, for example, if Villarreal, they have a good run. And yeah, that, really something like that would be better, honestly. They get to the semifinals, like, and they necessarily miss out by, like, a couple of points, or they miss out by a few points. I will say giving them a spot won't be that bad, in my and opinion. Something like that, isn't it? Because you're rewarding solely for effort. Yeah. yeah, you're rewarding for I used to be good. Good, yeah. Or maybe given the like second spot you, you have not known for us pulling up into the champions <laughs> <laughs> because they've because they won it twice in the right. 80s. Yeah. Or Aston Villa, they've won it before. Yeah. Yeah. Or another idea for let's be honest, honest we know those two places. Those two places are going to my United or Arsenal, or yeah. my United or my scene or something. Yeah. That's not been one year Champions League again. Sure. Yeah. Or like another idea for your spot to be maybe to give it to both finals of the Europa League. So making it to the final of the Europa League makes it makes it extra special. And teams aren't just fighting for Champions League qualification. They're actually fighting to win the trophy because they're they're already in the Champions League. Yeah. 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 That that'll make it that I think that'll add snippets to but then you have this situation where it's like, okay, but what if two of them already qualify for a Champions League through the league? Yeah, then, uh, then give it to Scotland, semifinals. Portugal, Russia. Honestly, oh, we Russia. need more teams. Right. We need more We need more diversity in the Champions League. I remember when you, had to, you saw a lot of teams like Apoel oh, and yeah. the Gretz. No, I already said that because... Sure, but, but these days we have Benfica yeah. and like, even that scene is like, Oh, the Champions League is so diverse. <laughs> yeah, but, like, but Benfica, Benfica used to, Porto used to regularly at least hit quarterfinals. Yeah, before, yeah, so yeah. It shouldn't be that much of a surprise to see two of them at that stage. No, but it's going to that stage where it's like if it's a shock. It's a shock, yeah. Yeah, because I think it was eighteen nineteen, right, where there was no, or was it nineteen twenty, where there was no for there was no team outside Europe's top five leagues. Yeah. Yeah, it was nineteen twenty. Because 1819 Ajax made it to the 70s. Yeah, Ajax made it to the semifinal. Port- yeah. Roman shot though in the round of 16. Yeah. And Porto got their annual manhandling. <laughs> <Annual Liverpool. Liverpool. laughs> yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that changes. Like maybe we can talk about the changes more in depth and closer to the Champions League final. And yeah. But so far, thanks so much for coming again. Thanks and for having me. Yeah. As a 
a pleasure and hopefully we'll be discussing more Spanish football triumphs next week <laughs> and not uh, some hidings by Bayern Munich. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't go down bad. But whatever it is, we are fans. You've been treated with a lot of great memories over the last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's not about the it's not about the games, it's about memories. It's about the memories. <laughs> Adios, everyone. Just don't don't let the memories be traumatic, like <laughs> mine for my last quarterfinal. True, true. A two. <laughs> yeah. Adios. Oh, 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 yeah. Bye.